Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 10 a.m. Miami time, and I am speaking with Amelia Brandao and Rodrigo Costa Lima. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to speak with me today. Thank you, Carol, for the opportunity. So, um, could you tell us exactly where you are located um, now and how the recent events surrounding the pandemic have changed the structure of your life and your work? So we are in Porto, Portugal. We live in the city center. Uh, we live in the upper part of the, the city, but easily we go down to the downtown. And a few minutes walk distance, we go to the riverside. So it's a, very, it's a small city, but a very good scale to live. We are at home with our kids. We have a, a son with four years old and another one with seven years old at school <laughs> so we are our life has changed a bit because we we have established a rule in our house since we have kids that are young and request a lot of our attention that we we'll never bring uh, work at our home but of course we sometimes we bring computers because we have uh, work to do but th this was the rule that we had established before everything happened and of course now we have to break that rule and uh, we brought everything home. We, we didn't have a printer even or something, so we had to bring everything at home. And now, and more recently, we brought all the information we had from the office. So that's the biggest uh, change in our lives, to work at home. Yes, indeed. Rodrigo, is there anything you would like to add to that? Yeah, now, now we are, I work in the morning, and in the afternoon, and that's, kind of the, the, the rule that we established here so we can keep following, you know, yeah. keep online. Because we have homeschooling to do. Yeah. <laughs> we have the... You're working in shifts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we are also doing, uh, we are learning again, you know, because our other uh, son is on the first year of school, so he really needs our support. Yes. Well, I'm grateful then, more than ever, that you're both taking the time to speak with me briefly. So I, I wonder if in the recent changes um, that have occurred with the pandemic, you've given any thought to how these events may influence the future world of architecture or even architectural education um, as practitioners and educators, um, or maybe more broadly, if you think it will have any impact on the future design of our cities. Good. First, well, as a practice, we always work with, with uh, uh, in partnerships with other uh, with other friends or other groups of people. So we are kind of used to this connectivity and this uh, sometimes meetings on the phone more essentially. But now Zoom has become the tool to work, definitely. Uh, but we because we are a small uh, structure, we are flexible to to support this uh, event in our lives so we are flexible and we have we have different teams that we work always and so it didn't change as much in as a practice but as an academic academia of course it has changed a lot because you can't be in the same space you cannot go to the university and this is really affecting our lives you know better than me yeah. Normally, uh, architects always give uh, an answer, you know, so we, we are not very speculative on, on these, so it's, it's very rare that, you know, that it's very, it's much more accessible, this kind of speculation, so you can easily make a photo montage, you can invent a proposal, but you need, you always need kind of a, a support, you know, from, from the government or from the state to move forward that idea. And I think architects should be much more on this on this side in the future if they want to really be, you know, like on 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 to have a decision. So you know, if you are not on, you, because normally architects speak with, they're just they can just com communicate with architects, you know, and we we all know that, you know, even the terms we use is to communicate with architects. So it's it's kind. It's very academic in the way the way architects communicate. And if you if you really want to make our ideas to succeed, you have to be, be more have a different position, you know, in the society to be more relevant and to to make things go through. You know, so there's 
you can always make a beautiful drawing like like many of the students are very well informed nowadays and they can make beautiful drawings but in the end it's almost art pieces you know because actually it, it, it's very difficult to build mm -hmm. also this is the uh, the architecture has to be this also agreeing with with Julio on this doing the architect has to be a technical response and we should try to make a uh, to be an architectural response has to be supported by the political uh, political position because as in the beginning like we were talking the other day about the tuberculosis that somehow architecture became the technical response to everybody and it was it was proved to be efficient then because it was because it was not just about uh, to have light or air or uh, Condition, well, good conditions of living. It was also because it was the best technical response for this disease was then. So I think we should, uh, architects should be this support now, or we, sh we should try that architects could be this support again. So are you um, architects to sort of look beyond the world of, uh, of or beyond their immediate and play a more active role in the discussions taking place? Um, is that what you're saying? Yes, they should be able to contribute to laws and rules and you know all these all these bureaucratic that we intend to be bureaucratic but are the thing that really have influence in architecture. You know? yeah. And we yeah. should be able to, to contribute on these terms. If we don't, we are losing you know, a great part of the opportunity of the kind of the, what architects can really do. Mm -hmm. I think. And perhaps, Just, you know. do you think it's possible though that we as architects, you, you alluded earlier to the power of drawing, but drawing sometimes can give clarity to words or abstract ideas, for example. Um, and so perhaps it's a combination of both, you know, an ability to have a voice beyond the immediate circle of architecture, but also use the skills of the architect to advance clear ideas about the future, meaning through drawing, for instance. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you have a beautiful ideas or if you have beautiful drawings, if nobody nobody can, can see it, it. No, nobody can read it, you know? So it's, it's, it's about that, you know? You have beautiful ideas, beautiful drawings, but nobody has, you know? If you go, imagine reach. normally for exhibitions in architecture, for example, you know, you make these ex these exhibitions, and nobody can follow the, the ideas. Like, like, not is that it's really for architects in a way. You know, it's very difficult to follow. So, you have beautiful ideas if you have your your own archive with, with those ideas. It doesn't really matter, no. just for yourself. I, I was talking about the, the the things that you you can produce, but if you have in your own archive and nobody can is able to see, you know, it happens the same in the universities. You know, in the schools, in the museum, it's everywhere. And the thing when we started, for example, Porto Academy, it we we from it, the start that from we the start we immediately proposed this. You know, to we have to share, share everything we produce. We we share all the booklets that with the works that were produced in the studios during that week, all the lectures. We thought this should be available to everyone. So we have been doing this for these years now, and I think it's very productive. Yeah, if you can, if you have access to, you know, to, to all this information, it doesn't really matter if you don't have access to the information. So people have to be able, kind of, this, this kind of architecture uh, investigation that you don't really have, you know, because of all these PhD that people study a lot and have beautiful PhD, and they can, they are able to make beautiful books, but then you don't, you are not able to read it because they are not accessible because they are part of the archive of the university, for example. So it should be more like the scientists, for example. They, the scientists have they, they they have a line to follow. Imagine that you investigation uh, investigation cancer, for example. No, you you yeah, you study you work. You have kind of this financial support to study for two, three, four years. You know, so you build the team and you study. You know, propose this and you study two, four years. But then someone will take this and will go a bit further. But all this information is accessible almost worldwide, no? And that is fantastic. And architecture is not in this scenario. And also, we are not really 
Tell me, tell me. You, <laughs> you tell me. About the dissemination of the information of the Porto Academy. Um, and so what have you done to be able to communicate your architectural ideas beyond the immediacy of the architectural community? Have you put out the work on different um, platforms? Uh, what kinds of things have you done to make the work more accessible? You mean the work of Porto Academy? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. We put it immediate. You find a way to represent, imagine the lectures, the way we record the lectures. Mm -hmm. So we mainly record the screen and the sound. That was kind of something that we immediately thought that it should be, and we that talked with the with the, the oh, video yeah. responsibles, Ivo like, Tavar, that is now is working with us since the very beginning, to make it that way. So you can easily, a kind of a podcast, more, mm -hmm. more or less. No, you don't want to see people talking. You want to see the drawings, what is. Know online, so the way you communicate online is different than to see on lecture. Of course, that is not doesn't doesn't substitute the lecture, you know, and that is also an error that everybody now is talking about. This like this can be good, this can't be good. This will never be good that people are isolated. It will never be good. You know the 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 the. No, the, it's not good because society. We need contact. Yeah, it's about we being together. To, to evolve, you need to be with other people. To have opportunity, you have to be with, you know, have to, to be able to, to be together, to communicate, to, 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 to change experiences. I think this, uh, this uh, lectures online are just a solution for now, or uh, I hope, uh, but uh, it's not really, it doesn't really replace on live, like a concert. No? It doesn't have the same feeling. You need a, you need to to feel the, the person's. Uh, it's nice. It's nice to make to make both. You know, you can make it really imagine. I don't know to 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 to, to see drawings, for example. It's very good because you can really you can easily zoom in and zoom out. You know, if you print it, you cannot. Uh -huh. do and it. you can draw without any um, restraint because you're not destroying any drawing. You can easily draw on it. And mm -hmm. this is another tool that uh, this has allowed us to do. It was not like Port Academy now. It's not. It's not really uh, meant to be an online version. It really has really to do with the physical experience and living and com and, and being together with all these people from all, so many different cultures in one week. This has to do a lot of living together, architecture and digital. Want to be the same thing. Of course, it has good things. Imagine for someone that lives that lives, I don't know, very isolated and don't have the money to live in the city, for example. It's good if they can stay at home and learn from home, you know. And instead of imagine if you are studying in in, in New York or in Milan or you know, this kind of or Tokyo or whatever, that's difficult to find it's an apartment. It's, it's kind of expensive. It's nice if you can go there, imagine to study for a week and then come back. You know, and you can follow on the way. That mm -hmm. is very good. Yeah, more you know? convenient. Yeah. It's really, it's, it makes possible. It's it's kind of an opportunity because it's it's not easy for for someone that is from a, you know from a poor country or, or a poor family to go and study in these kind of places. It's almost impossible. The books are a good example on this. So uh, I, I would say, like more than ten years ago, or at least ten years ago, people would say, okay. The books are, it's the end of the books. There's no way to keep on printing because it's too expensive and it's much, much, much better to read it online. And then, but you, you, you lose the physical experience to have a book in your hands. And, you know? and that's why we, and we, then actually you, you we did at uh, Index newspaper. We printed, you know, we have this magazine, Index newspaper. It was made of newspaper paper to keep that feeling of having the, the newspaper. With, the physical experience of having uh, something to read. Mm. So, but we and we wanted to keep this idea that the physical will last. This idea of reading will last in the physical uh, in terms of physical. Yeah, That's and it's, it's the same in architecture when you are doing these these beautiful images of these beautiful buildings. Even the students, they hope to build that. No. You make kind of a reduction, you make kind of an abstraction, but your idea is to build. You know, it's to have this physical experience, you aim for it.
But maybe it's not all schools of architecture. I think that there are um, maybe many schools that are content to remain solely in the conceptual realm. Um, I believe, um, and, and I don't want to read into your, your project, but I believe that the Porto Academy is um, supporting the idea of architecture um, and, and the discipline of architecture that might ultimately end in practice. I think that you, you seem to focus on practitioners, you seem to focus, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, on individuals that are obviously advancing architectural ideas and theories, but with the ultimate goal of uh, executing those ideas in the built environment. So um, while that seems like a pretty obvious uh, uh, approach in terms of architecture, I would say that it's not so common today, in fact. So um, I think that your assertion of the physicality of both the experience, um, but also the ultimate goal of uh, producing a physical architecture um, that builds cities and places, I think is, uh, is still, it's an important narrative today. So, so thank you again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I look forward to be able to cross paths in the physical world sooner, yes. <laughs> sooner rather than later. So, <laughs>